All right. I have a treat for you guys today. Our guest is Karen Urbanek. And let me give you a little backstory on Karen. So I first started to hear about Karen literally because one of my really good friends, Jenny Lang Griffiths, who is a holistic health coach and super, super smart. Um, she was sharing all these things that she had been learning recently. And I was like, who are you learning this stuff from? This is awesome. She's like, Karen, Karen Urbanek. She's awesome. I'm like, okay. <laughs> and so it piqued my interest that some of the things that she was teaching my friend. And then um, I was actually on a Redmond Real Salt fasting group and I saw Karen on a live and I was like, this woman is amazing. I was so blown away by her. I, just the information she shares, just wait and see. And she's just so fun. Um, she's such a great educator. Uh, she's described as an entertaining science-based educator who's on fire to help the world get back to the basics of health. And I'd say that is a wonderful way to describe her. Um, and a little backstory, Karen grew up on medications for epilepsy. Um, and she got really motivated to just get all the pharmaceuticals out of her life. And she became epileptic free at age 21 using foods and herbs. And then she further studied to become a holistic healthcare practitioner. Um, she's now an accomplished author, speaker, motivator. She's a mother to 11. I kid you not. And she's such an, so inspiring as a mom, like her kids are like, yeah, the, it makes an impression on you when you meet their family. It's just like, wow, you guys are like healthy and thriving and happy and beautiful. Um, and yeah, she actually has run two wellness centers in the past. She's run organic grocery stores, organic cafes, and is now the CEO of the International Education Site Holistic Health Educators. Um, her daughter, Amy Sprouse, I hope you guys hear that episode. They're just amazing. And um, I, Holistic Health Educators is who I recommend if anybody's looking to become a holistic health coach or just expand their knowledge. I, I, like, I'm honored to recommend them. It is so impressive what they have put together for holistic health educators. And on top of it, the vibe is just so high. It's just so much caring and love and, but like also cutting edge science and balancing that with the basics, you know, it's just, it's really amazing. So we'll put a link to that in the show notes for holistic health educators.com. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. Here is Karen Urbanek. Before we jump into the show, I am extremely honored to share with you the sponsor of this podcast, and that is Rep Provisions. And I want to tell you a little bit about who they are, what they're about. They are a regenerative agriculture company. They are a ranch. I have been to the ranch myself. Incredible. And if you aren't familiar with regenerative agriculture, it is my extreme honor to introduce you. So here's a few statistics of why regenerative agriculture is important before I get into what it is. First of all, the United States is losing topsoil 10 times faster than it's replenishing it right now. And this comes from our modern conventional agriculture practices that we've really just developed in the last several decades. The way we are raising cattle and the way we are growing these monocrops of plants is depleting our topsoil at astronomical rates. And I love the way Eric Perner, the founder uh, and owner of Rep Provisions, the rancher there at the ranch, I love how he puts this. He says that our planet is just a giant rock spinning in space with a tiny layer of topsoil and subsoil that supports all life on the planet. Every economy, every nation is sustained by this layer of topsoil. It's really important, right? We don't have any soil or quality soil health goes down and then eventually life goes away. Right. So it's, it's so important. Um, right now we're losing about 75 billion tons of topsoil every year, because as it erodes from these conventional farming practices, it goes into the waterways and then goes into the ocean and we lose it. So it's not sustainable, obviously, and we have to regenerate the topsoil. And this is where regenerative agriculture comes in. And the way they raise their animals is supportive of regeneration of the topsoil. So you can listen to my podcast episode with Eric Perner if you want to learn more about exactly how they do it. It's so important. Now, from a health perspective, this is so cool. Um, Eric just shared with me that they had their meat lab tested at Michigan State University. And if you're not familiar with omega-6 to omega-3 ratios, let me share this with you real quick. So omega-6s are pro-inflammatory. They're in all foods. Omega-3s are anti-inflammatory. So this is all foods have a certain ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. Now the ideal is one-to-one, -one, right? So we balance out that pro-inflammatory aspect of food, which is important. It triggers a lot of things in our body, but we balance it with the anti-inflammatory effect. On average, Americans are 10 to one 
their omega-6 to omega-3 ratio is 10 to one, because honestly we eat so much canola oil and so many processed foods and all the way up to 30 to one and higher. It's super inflammatory, causes heart disease, cancer, all disease. Um, grain fed meat is on average five to one ratio or worse. And what came back from Michigan state university is that rep provisions meat has a one-to-one omega-6 to omega-3 ratio, which is freaking huge. Um, so, so cool. I'm so glad they found that out. And by the way, just FYI, grain fed chicken has a 15 to one ratio and seed oils are the worst like canola. Um, so we mean all these industrial seed oils, 70 to one or worse. And they estimate that 25% of the calories in the American diet come from canola oil. No wonder there's so much disease. No wonder everyone's so unhealthy. So just wanted to share that with you guys. This is not only an amazing way to support the planet, but also your own health. Um, and they're giving you guys an awesome discount. It's one of the highest discounts they offer 15% off anything with code coach Tara. So I'll link that in the show notes, or you can go to repprovisions.com anytime and just use the coupon code coach Tara and get 15% off. Karen, I am so excited to give you a microphone. I wish that I had billions, you know, the whole entire human population subscribed to my podcast. So they could hear you because that's my friend, Jenny Lynn Griffiths is how I originally found you. I, she just was raving about you, raving about you. And she's taken many advanced nutrition courses. And I was like, wow, this woman sounds amazing. And I saw you on a live, I think in the Redmond real salt fasting group or something like that. And I was like, what this woman is amazing. So, um, it's been so cool to learn from you and be able to, you know, meet with you. You're just this fountain of knowledge. I mentioned before, I was like, I don't know what, I mean, gosh, like you, we can go so many places. Where do we want to go? And you talked about minerals, vitamins, and amino acids and like how they actually work in the body. And I've so often I've, I've had it come to me. I'm like, can we just have like a course that's like, welcome to your body, which you actually do have, um, courses like that. I mean, beyond holistic health education, Educators. You have the human body master guide, you've got your th- uh, therapeutic nutritional counselor certification. So yeah, you've, you've created that the welcome to your body. And I think that would be awesome to dive into today. Um, and so I don't know where you want to start, but I'm going to let you go. Cause you're a master teacher. Let's dive into vitamins, minerals, and amino acids and how these things actually work in our body and what they're for, where we get them, all of that. You bet. And part of the background noise, I'm in New York with my daughter. She graduates, uh, from her college out here in a couple of weeks. So you'll hear lots of sirens and excitement because we're on the corner of Broadway <laughs> and something, but anyhow, um, you know, the body is amazing and it is like, it's so understandable. People keep thinking, oh, I have to go to a health food store or to a pharmaceutical, you know, place to get whatever it is because my body needs it. I'm like, oh my gosh, people just don't realize what our body actually does. And so that is my favorite thing is to talk about the basics because it's super exciting to talk about getting rid of cancer and neuropathy. And I mean, that's, but that's all relative as to what you're putting in on the basic level. So if we talk about uh, minerals and vitamins and amino acids, which is my favorite part, whenever I scan somebody and I'm working with people, I go right to those pages of my scan. I'm like, okay, let's see what your mineral content is and your vitamin content and your amino acids, because those are the building blocks of everything you see, your face, your skin, your body, your (laughs) organs, your glands, your tissues, your cells. And I don't know. So is that cool? Should I jump in? Yes. Let's dive in. Yes. Your body one-on-one. So first (laughs) off, well, we're, we're just going to have to talk about gardening, right? Because that's obviously super important. And so if you think of a garden and you are going to till your garden and then you, well, maybe you probably shouldn't till because you can do it back to Eden, but anyhow, you plant your seeds. And when the seed gets planted, then two things have to happen. It has to rain. If it never rains, it will never grow because the rain is going to germinate over that little seedling. And that seedling is going to have the heat from the sun and then the water from the rain. And it's going to pop open within 24 hours, right? Boom. And then it thinks to itself, I'm going to grow, right? And so this little seed is going to grow into a mighty plant providing fruit, right? And so the fruit might be a nut or a seed. The fruit might be a grain. The fruit might be a piece of fruit or a vegetable, but it's all fruit, right? And so it is it is the fruit of the plant that is going to provide an array of minerals and vitamins uh, and amino acids. It's the leaves of the plant. Don't eat them all because you'll die. But there's all these different, like these fundamental elements that are in the plants that provide the fuel for our body. All you ever need is a plant. You don't need to suck out of a cow. You don't need to eat dead animals. I mean, you can if you want, but you don't have to because everything's in a plant. That's where the cow gets it. That's where the dead animal got it, right? And so let's just talk about how the garden does that because it's a big long word called biotransmutation and it's totally blow your mind awesome. So if you picture the seedling and its little root 
going, oh, good morning, I'm awake, and the roots go down in the ground, they're looking for essential elements. They're looking for minerals because that yeah. plant can't grow without copper or zinc or aluminum or you know calcium, whatever that plant needs to, to trigger it electrically to grow, it's going to look for. It. And that brings me back to the electricity. So electricity mm -hmm. is everything. Everything in the world is atomic. You're atomic. My eyelashes are atomic. Your beautiful plant behind you is atomic. Even your things atomic. Your eyelashes, which are perfect atomic, right? Everything's atomic because everything's made of atoms and an atom. So if you combine atoms, then you can create something different, right? So if you yeah. go back to the purple table of elements, you have hydrogen, which is an atom with one electron orbiting right around the nucleus and one proton. Well, if you go to two electrons, you have helium. If you go to 19 electrons, you get potassium or 20 electrons, you get calcium or 12 electrons, you get magnesium, all these different minerals. And so when the plant's roots go into the ground and they grab onto the minerals, those minerals electrically stimulate the plant to create fruit. And then those minerals get absorbed through the root system and it goes through biotransmutation, which takes, which takes this rock or this sediment that it's absorbing. Right. And then it changes it into a, into a, a available mineral. So if you hear bioavailable, that means that your body can actually use it just like it is right. Rocks are not bioavailable. So you can go to a health food store and I will proudly tell you 99% of anything found in a health food store, Karen would never buy because it's just ice or rocks, right? And like, you can eat a bunch of rocks, but number one, you'll become a stoner, right? And then you'll have all these mm -hmm. stones in your body. Oh, I have kidney stones. I have gallstones. I have all these problems with, right? Well, because you ate a bunch of stones and you're not a plant. But number two, you can't absorb them. You can absorb maybe 15% of a stone, you know? So if you're going to have calcium carbonate, okay, great. Eat some chalk. It's much cheaper than buying it in a fancy little package, right? Anyhow, and, um, and you're not going to, it's not going to, you aren't a plant. You can't biotransmutate mm. that to do what it needs to do. So that's super important, Tara, because- a lot of people go to health food stores and they waste a ton of money and they pee yellow and they're just peeing out literally 90% of what they bought. So if they spend hundred bucks at the health food store, they absorb $10 of it. Well, we might want to rethink that and go to a whole food mineral, which is yeah. made out of the plant. And that's what sets, you know, what sets different um, foods apart. And so what I like to teach about is just those things, those minerals and those vitamins and amino acids, because now after understanding plants, and I'm going to share a couple more things about plants before I get into what minerals and vitamins actually do in the body. So a plant will absorb whatever it needs to grow the tomato. And a Roma tomato is going to need different things than a Wisconsin 66 tomato or a cherry tomato, right? So all these different minerals are needed. And if they're not in the ground, the plant's going to tell you it's going to have a yellow leaf. It won't grow to its full tuition, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Composition. It will, it will lack the flavor. There'll be something wrong with the plant because it's telling you there's something wrong. So we raised our family in Wisconsin and we had soybean uh, fields very close to where we were raising our family. And it's funny because we would drive by and I'm like, oh, they are so iron deficient. And the, the problem wasn't that the farmer wasn't putting down iron. It was that the wrong iron was being used and the plant couldn't change it from ferric to ferrous. And so just a quick little analogy, just so you can like thank your red pepper the next time you eat the red pepper mm -hmm. or like squeeze your rutabaga before you actually take a bite of the rutabaga, right? Is this is what the soybean plant will do. The soybean plant will see the iron sitting in the soil, but it can't, it can't absorb anything except ferrous iron, ferrous form of iron. And so it will literally send the chemicals needed into the ground to change the iron into the form that it needs so it can absorb it. Like, wow, right? And so the red pepper, which, you know, which is phenomenal because it gives you a lot of calcium. All these different foods that we eat, the lettuces and the arugulas and everything that we eat that's alive is providing really essential vitamins and minerals to the body. So when, yeah. when someone's like, oh, I need to get more calcium. Well, I don't ever recommend sucking out of a cow because number one, that's not the calcium that you need. You need calcium, which comes from a plant because it's a mineral and all the minerals on earth come from the ground, right? So if we're looking for calcium, which is a mineral and comes out of the ground, then we need to look in their plants, right? So you can yeah. have all your herbs like valerian root and 
white oak bark and all these herbs that have a ton of calcium in them. But then you also have all your dark, you know, dark leafy green vegetables, right? Your kale, your kelp, sunflower seeds, cashews. There's so many foods that are high in calcium and 99% of the body's calcium actually is, is um, triggering the bones. And remember how I said electricity is so cool. Well, calcium is a metal, right? And so are your bones made of metal? No, but the calcium is what's triggering your red blood cells to create thicker and healthier bones. And so the electricity of calcium, the electricity of copper, the electricity of iron, the trace minerals, the macro minerals, these are all things that that the body is gonna rely on. They're, I call minerals the sparks of life because they do just that. They spark life in the body um, and, and cool enough, Vitamins are the cofactors for minerals. So every time you have a vitamin, you need a cofactor. So you can't absorb iron unless you have vitamin C. You can't absorb selenium unless you have vitamin E. So these vitamins and minerals are like, they work together to help the body function. It's so fun. I love, I love it. It's amazing. It's amazing. So let's dive in. Like, can we dive in? Where do you want to start? Vitamins, minerals, amino acids? Um, well, let's, we, we're talking about minerals right now. We can talk about both. I can talk about all of them. So minerals, um, so minerals are divided into two categories, uh, macro minerals and trace minerals. The only difference is a trace mineral. You don't need as much, but hello, iron's a trace mineral and you need it, right? You can yeah. feel it when you don't have enough iron, right? You can see it yeah. and your white blood cells, I mean, your red blood cells are gone. So not gone, but not working properly. And so we, we need the minerals. So we need, you know, calcium and iron and zinc and carbon and, you know, all these choline. And we just, we need the minerals in our body and then we need the vitamins. And interesting enough, amino acids, are um, super fun to talk about because you hear the word protein being thrown around all the time. Oh, you need more protein. And I really want it to be that the next time you hear someone say you need more protein, you know, they actually don't know what they're talking about because no one needs more protein. They need more of specific amino acids. And right. this is fun. Um, if you think about if you think of um, a word, a word is made of letters, right? So K-A-R-E-N, my name is Karen. But if there's no K, then I'd be Aaron. Well, that would be dumb because I'm not Aaron. I'm Karen. I need to have a K to make my name. So amino acids are the same way. Amino acids link together to make a protein. And right. so, uh, so all of your proteins are made of amino acids. So the protein that makes my eyelashes or my eyebrows or my skin or the receptor sites on my cells, those protein receptor sites are all made of different amino acids. And so now if you step back and go, oh, I'm having a central nervous system disorder. Well, guess what? That's most likely because you're lacking the amino acids needed to make the myelin sheet. And so now your myelin sheath are already compromised and then you're eating sugar, which is going to destroy the myelin sheath. And now all of the stem cells are coming out of the nerves, trying to rebuild the myelin sheath, but they can't rebuild the myelin sheath because you don't have the amino acids necessary to grow the myelin sheath. So I love, love helping people understand this because instead of going out and just getting a medication for your nervous system, which is not needed and most of the time, what's needed is a basic understanding of what builds the immune system. And we have to go into the very basic building block of the world. And that is an amino acid, you know, and when we have amino acids, which are made minerals, vitamins, but we need all these things linking together, then we can build the actual, you know, cell so right. that we can create myelin sheath again. So and I, I just want to probably... highlight real quick. I'm going to cut in. I, sorry. I just no, want to highlight please. for this. So people know how well, you know, this because you grew up with epilepsy. And, and you've <laughs> overcome that, right? So when she's speaking of these central nervous system disorders and being able to give yourself the building blocks for these things to function well, I mean, you've lived through that, you know? So it's, I just wanted to give them some context there. Okay, let's, and I will, I, I, I just interviewed your daughter and I know everyone is going to love Amy so much. And it's just so awesome. I, I hope my audience is feeling like just the amazing energy that I'm talking about that you guys have and how intelligent you are and how well you are, how, how well you teach this stuff. But I was sharing on Amy's interview, I'm reading the biology of belief right now by Dr. Bruce Lipton. And this is all he's talking about how amazing this cell membrane is and how important these proteins are because it's like a whole universe, these operations. And when they just don't have the building blocks, I look at our cells 
as these subjects of this kingdom that were that they want to be they they're very loyal subjects they want to do everything they can to to help this whole system thrive but if they don't have any food or any any resources i mean there's only so much they can do and that's where we come in and it's our job to give them the resources to be able to be successful which is i i think what you're saying here so okay let's keep let's keep diving into these resources <laughs> well i'm so glad you brought up the fact that i had epilepsy because i did i had epilepsy I had three medications I was taking and I had, um, I had seizures since I was about five or six. And then, um, I got off of all of them when I was 20, because I realized that's when I started really studying the body, which was way before the World Wide web, just that dates me, I know, but Hey, can you imagine? And, um, and guess what? Epilepsy, any kind of, um, electricity in the body is a sign of GABA deficiency. So Tourette's and epilepsy, I've helped so people get rid of epilepsy because epilepsy is just the name right. given to somebody who has seizures and seizures happen because there's no GABA regulating the, uh, the electricity of the body. And well, there might not be GABA, which is a neurotransmitter made by the nervous system because you don't have the amino acids you need, you know, that you need, yeah. right? And right. so it goes just back to looking at the amino acids, the vitamins and the minerals so we can actually build the body. And I see this every time I do testing, every single time I test anybody for anything, I can see what they're deficient in. And then it's like, oh, well, and then I read them. Like I've got these charts. I have the uh, mineral vitamin and an amino acid chart, which states all the amino acids, the vitamins, the minerals, what they do in the body, what the deficient signs of deficiency are. And I'll read through the signs of deficiency and they're like, oh my gosh, I'm not making, you know, near enough yeah. of NADH, right? I'm, I'm not having, I'm having a hard time with all my hormones. I'm whatever it might be because I'm low in aspiric acid or, oh my goodness, I have Viriago. I have these white patches in my skin. Well, you're low in phenylene, right? Like there's so many things that, that if you look at the deficiencies, are just what people are dealing with. And then when they come in and they're like, and I always like, I don't ever feel bad, but I'm like, okay, yeah. So we are dealing with neuropathy or whatever we're dealing with. And here are the three amino acids you're deficient in. So it only makes sense that we want to improve amino acid you know, intake right. so that we can build it back again. So totally, totally. Okay. So, um, I, I, I love neurotransmitters. That's a huge part of, of my, one of my personal interests in health, um, because it has such a tremendous impact on our mental health and our mood and that state. So I would love to, to dive into amino acids a little bit more with you and understanding. And I love what you're saying. Cause well, I'm a huge fan of protein personally, but it's really the amino acids I'm after. It's like, well, if yeah. you don't have enough tyrosine, you're not going to have dopamine. You're going to feel like crap. If you don't have enough yep. tryptophan, you're not going to have serotonin. You're going to feel like crap, right? So can we talk um, in terms of some of the, uh, I guess, benefits we get in our body out of the different amino acids, whichever ones I know there's, you know, we don't have to go into all of them. We can, but just some highlights that you would like to share with people that you think might be beneficial for them to know. Well, I can, sh why don't I do, what I'll do is I will share with them some of the deficiencies I see a lot, yeah, right? So I see a lot of essential amino acid deficiencies that seem to be prominent, especially now. So, um, more than in cool. years past. Awesome. And so, um, I think, yeah, I think the, the phenylalanine is a deficiency, um, and it's, it's huge because it's a huge part of the central nervous system. And if we think of what's going on in the world right now, there's a lot of people having nervous system disorders yes. because of things that are put in the body or things that we're exposed to. Yeah. And um, so we did just do a podcast. We did two podcasts, one on neurotransmitters and one on how to restore the nerves. So it's nerve regeneration. And I definitely can help you with that. So, so please, good. those are free podcasts on our podcast page. Uh, anyhow, and, and it does on holistic back. health. Definitely Sorry, cutting mm -hmm. in holistic yeah, health educators page. <laughs> Dot com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Holistic okay. Health okay. Educator Podcast. Yep. And we, because okay. Amy and I cover a lot about this because I have so many clients that are dealing with nervous system disorder and there are ways to regenerate nerves, period. So we know how to do that. You shouldn't have to pay a doctor for them to teach you how to regenerate nerves. So please go listen to those podcasts. Super important. Awesome. Awesome. Um, but let me just explain what, what some of these amino acids do. So, uh, the phenylalanine, it is a, um, it's, it's essential. So you have essential amino acids and you have non-essential amino acids when they're essential. That means your body doesn't make them. So you need to get them from an outside source. So, uh, and there are some foods that have all of your, you know, I mean, essential amino acids, right? It's like bee pollen has all of your essential amino acids, spirulina has all of your essential amino acids. So, um, there are foods that you, that have everything pumpkin seeds, by the way, have a lot, they don't have everything, but they have a lot of amino acids 
assets. And so by looking at this list and this chart, you can see, oh, there are certain foods that actually have a lot of basic amino acids. And so when I'm saying things like, okay, you need to do some lentils or some spirulina, actually all of your seaweeds are loaded with this. People are like, what? I'm like, no, like, okay, you can go spend money on a supplement that's an isolate, which I wouldn't recommend, or you can eat the food that has it naturally occurring so that your body actually can absorb it and give you that strength. And so it's cool because this, this in particular one, it will make you help better. It'll make you feel happy. It'll improve your memory, right? In, incredible uh, structure with all of the different building, many of the proteins uh, and enzymes, um, and it helps other enzymes and amino acids form together as well. So it's not just the nervous system, right? It is, it's a precursor to many any of the nervous of the neurotransmitters, tyrosine and nephrine, dopamine, right. right? Norepinephrine, those are all dependent on this. So if we don't yeah. have enough in our body, we can't make any of those. And that's a great point yeah. that you brought up. Um, proline is a big one. It's helped in, uh, it helps uh, healthy, it helps create healthy cells in the body. And it's a very important component of collagen, right? And so a lot of people are lower in collagen because they're, and their joints and their tendons aren't functioning properly because they don't have enough collagen, but if they don't have enough proline, they can't make collagen, right? right. Um, and proline is extremely important just for the skin, the skin, the hair, connective tissues, uh, any kind of traumatic injury on a site, you need more proline. Um, and, and it's interesting because I always tell people, if you meet someone who is not healing, they get a cut or they bruise or the broken leg, and it just won't heal. It's because they're missing amino acids. Proteins build the body. We have to have proteins in the body, but they're made from amino acids. Right. And so we can't build that part of the body if lacking something as simple as proline, right? Um, anyhow, it's just phenomenal. Um, yeah, I, 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 like you mentioned tryptophan and tryptophan, actually a lot of people are low on tryptophan, uh, which converts to serotonin. Uh, it's an essential amino acid and it's the precursor to the five HTP. Um, and that's the direct precursor to serotonin. Uh, anyhow, but besides that, we, it also synthesizes your B vitamins, right? So niacin neurotransmitters, um, that melatonin also is dependent on that. Yeah. So people who can't sleep well at night, it can be because they don't have enough tryptophan, you know, after Thanksgiving dinner, you have plenty of tryptophan and you fall asleep, right? <laughs> Right. That's so much from the right. um, So it's just, it's just really neat. Um, and interesting yeah. enough, you, you might jump, go ahead and take some, okay. And this is the good example. Let's say you go to a health food store, I need tryptophan. They're going to give you, you know, the one that they make the most money on, which is an isolate. Here's tryptophan. Guess what? Tryptophan won't work unless you have iron and riboflavin and vitamin B6. So you have to have those, yeah. those um, cofactors in order right. for tryptophan to work. So if you eat turkey, well, it has a lot of that in it, right? Turkey right. will have some of those things in it, so it'll work better. So that's why isolates are always at the bottom of my list, because what people don't understand is if you take an isolate and it needs these other components to work. So if you're taking a tryptophan isolate, great. Okay. Wonderful. But guess what? The tryptophan isolate is going to pull iron out of your body. It's going to pull B6 out of the body because it needs it in order to work. Yeah. So if they yeah. give you an isolate of vitamin C, mm -hmm. right? Oh, let's take ester C. Oh my gosh, please never take that. Right. Because it's going to strip all the other elements out of your body that are already naturally found in a whole food vitamin C. So yes, it's more money to buy a whole food vitamin or a whole food mineral. Um, but it's so much more, it's so much more better because it has all of the cofactors. So you're not wasting any of your money again. And I think that's probably my biggest thing with, um, amino acids and even with, you know, vitamins and minerals is really, really, really look at your source. Um, as far as when people are looking to boost amino acids, often I'll recommend a collagen. There's beef, chicken, and marine, and then a vegan uh, source, and they're all good, organic only, of course. But um, I actually find a lot of my clients test best for marine-based collagen. Some will do beef or some will do chicken, but I, I don't know why. It's just what tests best. And, and it could be, you know, it's just interesting. So if anybody's looking for, okay, which one do I buy? You might want to lean towards the, the marine-based only because so many of my clients actually naturally test better for that. And I don't sell it. Um, that's one thing I, I have not done for years and years and years to sell product. Um, I can encourage, I, when I meet with my clients, I encourage them of what to take and where to buy it, but I, I don't care because I'm not, I don't want anybody to ever think, Oh, she's selling it. That's why she's right. recommending it. That's not right. it. And you need to be very careful. People need to be very careful about that because right. I, I have, I have tested women. I, had this one woman in particular, like she couldn't absorb any B vitamins. Like, and I'm like, I was doing everything to help her absorb B vitamins. I'm like, what happened to you? She said, well, 
there was this woman, uh, there was this doctor that I went to and he got me on so many B vitamins and if they were isolated B vitamins and on and on after I researched this and she said, um, you know, and now I can't absorb it. Well, what happened is that doctor had so much product that he had to sell that everybody who came in just got these huge amounts of this new product line he brought in. And, uh, and it literally curtailed her health so drastically that I, I probably should have filed something against that that guy, but um, we need to be careful when people are doing that. So just do your research on, on whole food supplements and products before you just give in to buy something, because a lot of supplements people are buying, even essential oils are exactly the same. They're mm -hmm. just in different packages. And I can't tell you that enough. So just be careful. Yeah. That's all. Uh, in terms of absorption, I'm curious, you know, you, if you have somebody come in and they have severe gut issues, you know, mm -hmm. and you want, you want to increase this absorption, you know, what are, cause I'm obviously that impacts it. Like what's, what, what's your order of operations here? Let's say they have definite signs of low tryptophan, you know, their serotonin is in the crap or they got all the signs for that, but they also have really poor digestive health. Like what's your order of operations there for someone like that? That's an excellent question. So leaky gut is very prevalent. Candida is very prevalent. Um, and there's some very simple things you can do to fix both of those things. Um, candida is, you can do an easy test. Um, so candida is a yeast that overgrows in the body and um, candida will do this thing. I'm just trying to get the lighting better. Sorry about that. The I love that the sun, that, I well, you're talking about electric electricity and how important it is for our health and the sun's just okay. like, here I am. <laughs> if you guys are watching, I, 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 love, I love, you can tell by my skin. I love the sun, like naked at noon, baby. I'm not awesome. there, well, not awesome. Naked. It, but you know, I love it anyhow. Um, and uh, so candida is a yeast overgrowth and there's a really simple test you can do at home to see if you have an overgrowth of candida, probably 75% of the people I meet with have candida overgrowth. Wow. And what's cool is that once you get rid of candida overgrowth, you feel amazing and you, it will help heal the body. So a really simple test and it works 90 some percent of the time is you take a, 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 wa a glass, right? But do a clear glass. Um, so a clear glass glass preferably and fill it with water doesn't even matter what kind i've done this test with ro distilled any tap water it doesn't matter and put fill it with water and first thing in the morning get up mm -mm -mm, create a big louie and spit in that glass and you're going to watch and see if the spit starts to come down and start sinking in the in the glass you have a candida overgrowth uh most likely still in the body it, it is just a very sure tell wow. sign and so you can work on getting rid of that candida I have a lot of information on that. The, the basic thing to understand is it's a yeast. It grows on sugar. So we avoid grain and sugar to stop feeding the candida. The hard part is candida is, um, bye Rose, have a great day. Candida has, uh, it's an enzyme and has a very hard outer shell. And that outer shell is very hard to get through. So to kill candida isn't easy. It takes specific enzymes. And so you'll find different enzyme blends. The one that we have used since 2008 with great success for our clients is from a company called Pure Formulas or Pure Labs. Um, and it's called Candex, C-A-N-D-E-X. It works very well. And awesome. so people will take two at night, two in the morning. And um, over the within days, they stop craving sugar. That's probably the number one thing. Because if, if you picture candida, it's like Pac-Man. And it's going right. in the body and it's eating up all the sugar. And so um, if you can kill it, well, then you're not craving sugar. Because no one should crave sugar. If you're craving sugar, that's a telltale sign. You have candida overgrowth, cancer, or parasites are all three. Because the human body doesn't crave sugar. The human body craves energy, but it'll eat an apple or a banana. It'll eat at something natural. But when we're craving, we're craving excess sugar, like in a carb, like bread or just one cookie or just one scoop of ice cream or just one, you know, one right. waffle or one pancake, or that's all a sign of candida overgrowth. And so is toenail fungus and yeast infections and weird crap coming out your elbows and under your arms and dandruff. Those are all signs of candida overgrowth. And so getting rid of that is important. And then leaky gut. And I'm sure you've had people speak on leaky gut before. There's many ways to heal leaky gut. Karen's go-to is really always marshmallow root and slippery elm. But I'm not, I'm not going to tell you to go buy capsules of either one of them because I don't like capsules in your body either. I like the actual herb, right? So I'm like, go get some slippery elm herb, you know, the root and some marshmallow root. 
and mix a couple of teaspoons of each together and drink it in the morning and drink it at night, right? Because now, and marshmallow and slippery elm are phenomenal at pulling together the tight junctions. So we don't have leaky gut. Leaky gut is when there's a tight junction that's open. And, and if, if we have leaky gut, that, that everyone who has allergies has leaky gut. Anyone who's ever had a stroke had leaky gut. There's signs of leaky gut all over. Um, and so we need to pull those we need to pull those uh, dead end zones together again. And slippery elm and marshmallow have the L glutamate. There's lots of things out there, but those are the things that I've always recommended because it works so well. I'll yeah. test people with how much they need, but that's what I would recommend. Um, absorption also comes from the villi. That's the main way to absorb. You have these millions, millions. If this is a villi, these are called microvilli, the very top of the fingers. So my hands are held together by medosomes. And then there's a little villi, microvilli, and our intestinal tract is loaded with millions and millions of these little microvilli that suck things up. So when we eat when we eat a mango, right? Boom, we're, we're chewing the mango, which that saliva is triggering all of the digestive juices in the body to be released depending because the saliva can tell the body, Hey, this is full of protein or Hey, this doesn't have much protein, but Hey, it's got a lot of, you know, um, uh, carbohydrates or a lot of fats. And so different things are triggered to release just by us chewing our food. So by the time yeah. the food actually gets in the intestinal system, millions of microvilli are there waiting to absorb what's coming through. Some things have to get broken down or emulsified before they can get absorbed. Simple, simple. But interesting enough, these villi, these tiny little villi, if they're coated with mucus, or gluten, <laughs> we might have a problem, right? Because those are, that's glutinous and it's mucusy and it's filling and wrapping our, our sweet little microvilli, which are just trying to absorb something. Um, so oftentimes we do recommend of avoiding gluten uh, for most human beings. I, I wouldn't recommend gluten for many people unless maybe it's sprouted in sourdough. Our bodies stopped being able to break down wheat in the 1950s when we introduced antibiotics into all of our meat and all of into our world just in general because antibiotics destroy the microbiome and then we genetically modified it on top of everything else and we used instant yeast so wow three major setbacks so if you're going to eat wheat you know please pray over it <laughs> and, <laughs> and and ask forgiveness from your microvilli and then enjoy it, you know, yeah. or which might sound extreme, but I'm, I'm dead serious. I really would avoid gluten. Um, maybe just enjoy some sourdough. Like I'm going to go to the farmer's market here in, in, uh, Inwood, and we're going to pick up some, you know, sprouted sourdough bread because it's fun. You know, I'll get a half yeah. a loaf, I don't eat very much, but it's enjoyable. But again, yeah. I think we have to be careful of what we're putting into our bodies. If we're not absorbing, it's because of what we're eating. And so we need to mm -hmm. change what we're eating. Mm -hmm. And then fix our microvilli, and then we will live happily ever after absorbing food again. And I'll tell you, that's a big issue is of absor is absorption. So I'm glad you brought yeah. that up. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, I'm talking right. fast. I'm apologizing. Oh, right I love it. I well, I'm I'm one of those who listens to Audible on like double speed, and people are like, "How can you understand it?" And I'm like, "I really appreciate it. I I got it. <laughs> it's just an adaptation. You you can get there. I promise." <laughs> that's awesome. That's um, all right, so awesome. let's let's dive into vitamins for a minute, you know, cause most people, it's really interesting. I think, you know, most people kind of know vitamin C is like an antioxidant, you know, and they're like, I vitamin D, uh, I don't know. I heard it's good for fighting COVID and that's pretty mm -hmm. much it. You know what I mean? So yeah. let's, let's dive into the vitamins real quick. You know, what are some big yeah. hitters that people should know? Okay. So vitamin A, right. Just right off the bat, vitamin yeah. A, a lot of people don't realize vitamin A is incredible for the immune system and for all the glandular systems of the body. So the thyroid gland, right. Anything yeah. that's glandular, you got to make sure you have enough vitamin A and the body stores vitamin A in the liver for an entire year. Like, wow. so you have to remember there's fat soluble vitamins and water soluble vitamins. Yeah. Vitamin C is water soluble. You pee it all out within two hours. So if you're taking vitamin C, a ton of it in the morning, well, please don't do that. Cause you're literally going to urinate it all out or sweat it all out within, within two hours. You might have it all out within 15 minutes. If you're walking in New York with my daughter Rose, cause that girl runs everywhere, but, <laughs> <laughs> anyhow, but like literally it just comes out through our sweat glands. And so vitamin C is one of those water soluble vitamins you need to take 
several times a day, right? So if you're taking vitamin C, please up that to several times a day. Um, but you know, vitamin A, phenomenal for your vision, right? Vision, bones, and teeth promoting, uh, you know, digesting all your proteins, hormone development, lactation. If you're a mommy and you're lactating and it's not going so well, check out your vitamin A levels. Vitamin A is incredible as well for the lining of the gastrointestinal system um, and the lining of the re respiratory system and reproductive systems. And so even urinary tract infections, well, urinary tract infections are caused because there's different bacteria in the bladder. Um, and by the way, if you have reoccurring UTIs and nothing seems to get rid of it, go and have your urine tested for all the different um, bacteria because there are so many bacteria. And you have, I mean, we've had people who've had, you know, 12 all the different bacteria in their bladder, and some of them are antibiotic resistant. So no matter what they're doing, so then we go to ozone therapy. There's lots you can do for that, but that is a big reoccurring issue right now because people eat so much sugars, so much bacteria is in the body, it gets right. lodged in the bladder where it thinks it's safe. So just be careful. But again, vitamin A can help with that as well. Um, so your vitamin D, vitamin D is needed by 10% of the gene pool. So this is vitamin D is nothing new. Vitamin D is something I've been harping, not harping, but really encouraging people um, to take for a long time because it is, I, I call it the sunshine uh, vitamin, but interesting enough, vitamin D, if you're like, I, I rely on the sun to get my vitamin D because I know that UVB rays will turn into vitamin D in my, in my body. But this is a very, very, very interesting point. UVB rays only hit the skin between 10 o'clock in the morning and two or three in the afternoon. That's the only time the UVB rays hit close enough to the earth for our bodies to actually get the UVB to create vitamin D. So if you don't get outside during the 10 o'clock to three o'clock window, because you're working or teaching or whatever you're doing, well, then you're missing the vitamin D. So then getting onto a vitamin D supplementation is crucial, right? Um, it can be synthesized in the body from the UVB rays, but if we're not in the sun or not in a vitamin D bed, they make like a tanning system bed, yeah. which is all vitamin D. Uh, anyhow, Rose, my key, the keys are here, right? The keys. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Anyhow. Um, and so vitamin D, um, 2000, I use for every 25 pounds of body weight is usually what we recommend during the fall and the winter. Um, and, you know, there's a, it's, it's hard to get it in a, in a, in a food source. There are some food sources, uh, that help, but it's, it's, it's actually much harder to get it. Um, sprouted seeds may have some, some alfalfa will have some sunflower seeds. will have some, um, there's some fish that'll have more vitamin D, but again, vitamin D is a bit harder to get, uh, if you're not in the sun. So vitamin D supplementation can become really important. Yeah. Yeah. What about, and let's it, talk about oh, sorry, go ahead. I say it works with vitamin A for the skin as well. So if you're like, oh yeah, and my skin always looks better. Yep, because it synthesizes vitamin A as well. So it's just kind of a fun side note. Yeah, and I think, I mean, we can't talk about vitamin D, I think without hitting on the the, the support of the immune system that it is, which we're seeing Incredible. over and over in light of COVID. I mean, the numbers are insane about vitamin D deficiency mm -hmm. in correlation with negative outcomes with COVID. So, and depression and cancer yeah. and the darker your skin, the yeah. more vitamin do you need? Like right. anybody with dark skin needs right. much more vitamin D and much more sun exposure. So having someone with dark skin move to Wisconsin is right. not going to be really great. You know, you really want to look at that because you need so much more mm. sun and in states like the Midwest, you know, so I get, I'm always yep. like, I get it. Some people, when I grew, I raised my kids in Wisconsin and it was hard because it wasn't very diversified, but I'm like, I totally get why now I'm like, good. I don't want people of diversity of, of ethnicality with dark skin to move to Wisconsin because it would get them sick. You know, like yeah. they need to be where there's more sun. Uh, and it's just how it is. There's you know? I mean, yeah, I heard a, a, it was a, um, heart specialist, a doctor that specializes in heart health and he's really big on vitamin D. And he was, he was just flat out. He was like, if you live in a really cold area where it's cold all the time, move. <laughs> I mean, that's how he felt yeah, about exactly. it. Move. <laughs> and, right. uh, you know, I'm in Utah and I, you know, I met a, a woman and she was saying that she had just moved from Hawaii and her kids were, um, Polynesian. And she was saying how her son was so depressed, um, having moved to Utah and it was the middle of winter. And I just couldn't help, but think mm -hmm. of that. I'm like, he needs vitamin D. I would definitely just check or get him out in the sun somehow or supplement that. Cause I worry about that, that people don't realize that. And they think, Oh, I'm just like depressed because 
I moved to a new place. I don't have friends. I'm like, it may be deeper than that because of course there's an environmental aspect, you know, social networks and social support that lead to those kind of feelings. But there's also a, a, a bi biological reason often that we feel the way we feel as well. So yeah, vitamin D is a big, big hitter. And I think most people are saying it's, why do we have to call it a vitamin? It's so much more than just a vitamin. It's like it's so crucial to human health. Um, okay. Yes. For the can I mention one more thing about vitamin D? Please. Um, really important. I hope you can hear my lovely music in the background. I'm getting in. It's we're on Broadway. But anyhow, um, vitamin D, if you wear sunglasses, you won't absorb vitamin D from the skin. Super important. People just do not realize that sunglasses are one of the number one causes of vitamin D deficiency and even wow. skin cancer. Because wow. sunglasses, as soon as you put, so if you think about it, the pineal gland is integrally connected to the sun. Wherever yeah, the sun right. is, is talking to your pineal gland. Oh, the sun is setting. It's time to make melatonin. Right. And melatonin will, of course, help in the absorption of all these incredible uh, amino acids because we go into absorption when the sun sets. Um, it's called assimilation. But anyhow, um, if we wear sunglasses during the day, it tells the pineal gland that, okay, you know, it, it literally dysregulates circadian rhythm. Just by putting sunglasses yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, so great point. Do your, do your research on sunglasses because I, I definitely don't recommend it. And even one of my friends recently, she's like, Karen, did you know sunglasses? If you if you wear them, you get sunburn. If you don't wear them, you don't get as much sunburn. And I'm like, absolutely. Like it has everything wow. to do with skin health. And so this year she didn't wear sunglasses and she did not get sunburn. Wow. Uh, that has, that's one thing. There's a lot of reasons people get sunburn. Usually right. it's diet. They're very acidic. They're not alkaline. Don't get, you know, I don't want to say, oh, cut and dry. Stop wearing sunglasses. You'll never get sunburn because you need to be careful in what you're eating, what you're doing, et cetera. But it is really something that I think a lot of people don't consider is, well, when they put sunglasses on, they shut off the communication between the sun and the pineal gland. And that wow. does cause a lack of circadian rhythm. So, wow. I'm glad you interjected with that. That's such valuable information. And by the way, guys, if you're like, oh my gosh, I want all of this. And you're, if you're looking into health coaching, you are a health coach, like you have the most comprehensive <laughs> like resource library of anyone. It is absolutely insane what you have done over the course of your career. So holistic health educators, I mean that you guys are like my main stop. Anybody who asks me, where should I learn about health? I'm like holistic health educators. So we'll put the link in the show notes. Cause it's just like, you guys can kind of get a drift. I mean, it is information packed and so much wisdom and application on top. It's not just information. It's not just theory. You guys are actively helping people and have been for a long time. So it's just like super invaluable. So make sure you check out that resource. If you're like dying to learn more. Um, okay. I have for the sake of time, I have to ask you this. I have to ask you this because I know you're such a, a, a lover of plants. And I, I think my people know I am a lover of plants too, big time. And I have actually taken some heat in this, being in the keto world. I have taken some heat for being a lover of plants because there are a lot of non-lovers of plants. There are messages. Plants are trying to kill you. Plants don't have legs. They can't run away. They hate you. They've got toxins and all of these things in them that are trying to kill you. And it's, I admit it's a little bit of a, a hot spot for me because I'm like, but we're not telling the whole story. Um, as, um, mm -hmm. as, um, Amy mentioned in our previous episode, you, your body has to have a little bit of a trigger of an inflammatory response to produce glutathione and to make everything work. You would die without any inflammation in your body. It's part of biology. It's part of the processes that keep us healthy and strong. So I would love if you could just share your thoughts on plants being bad for you, you know, lectins, you know, phytic acid, all of these things, because there's so Oxalate. much fear oxalates. There's yeah, so much no. fear of plants right now. And I would just love to hear your take on it. No, 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 no. I, I know I hear it all. And the thing is, you're looking at someone who's been doing this for 30 years. Okay. Like I have been eating plants, no animals for 30 years. My body is in incredible health. My protein is off the chart. My iron levels, everything in my body functions. Well, people have a problem with plants when they have a leaky gut period. That is right. a huge issue. You right. have oscillate right. and oscillate damage because people have leaky guts. We'll fix the right. leaky gut and you won't have a problem with oscillates. Like Boom. there's so much. So, and I do, I need to be really careful here because in the keto world, great. I don't mind. I've thrown many of my clients on a keto diet. If they want to lose weight for six months, then no longer because our bodies are designed <laughs> to run on glucose. However, you can do a vegan keto diet. There's plenty of things you can do using plants. And again, so yeah. I think it just, everyone's, everyone's bodies are different. I'm type O and I won't touch meat 
meat. I don't like it at all. I just literally cannot eat meat and I haven't for 30 some years. Uh, I'll eat a little piece here and there. I'm a great chef and I had cafes where we served meat, <laughs> you know, but mm -hmm. it just was, it's not my deal. And so, yeah, the harsh reality is also we need to know where this edu education is coming from and who is funding everything. The yeah. meat industry is heavily funded guys, heavily funded, heavily funded. You have no idea how much funding goes into the meat and dairy industries. And there is zero funding for the vegetable and fruit industries. Okay. Right. There is funding for the grain industry. There's funding for the meat industry and there's funding for the dairy industry. And I don't eat meat for a number of reasons. If I did eat meat, it would only be Betsy who I raise in my backyard. And I make sure she's not covered in heavy metal or sprayed with metals. Her food hasn't been sprayed with metals because metal poisoning mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. toxic they're putting into our plants right. um, that, that we're feeding our animals is real. And whatever is in that animal, when you eat it, it is now in your body and study things like the mean meat theory, study, to study these different things. Because if you have children who are acting out all the time, it can be because of the adrenaline that's in the meat that they're eating because there's some cheap crappy meat from Walmart. And then you're wondering why your kids are acting out with ADD, ADHD or angry all the time, or their liver's all crappy and they're constipated. Literally, we have to look at what's in the food that we're eating um, yeah. and, and realize, ooh, we might be doing this to our children, right? We might be doing this to ourselves. And so just take a breather step back, calm down about the plants because there's no money funding the fruit and vegetable industries to fight back against the horrific meat industry who all they want you to do is eat dead animals. And I'm here to tell you, you never have to have another bite of a dead animal. You can, if you want, that's fine. You know, you're totally welcome to eat animals. My whole family, we have 11 kids and they learn how to hunt and fish, right? They learn how to do things like that so they could provide for their families. Some of them eat meat, some of them don't. I don't care you need amino acids. So get them from somewhere. You can't yeah. become a vegetarian and live off of noodles. Cause then you're going to be sick, right? So you right. need to get these vitamins, minerals, and amino acids from somewhere But you can be a bit more picky and a more choosy where you get them. I do not at all fear plants. I, I don't fear them because I've been able to help tens of thousands of my clients do well getting on a plant-based diet, reverse cancer, reverse epilepsy, reverse everything. There's not an illness you can mention that I have that, that, that I know of that I haven't been able to help somebody reverse. Um, that doesn't mean everybody reverses their illness because it's not up to me, it's up to them. But we definitely have seen incredible miracles time and time and time again. And it's not because I put them on a meat diet. Yeah. Thank and you for sharing. Enough. Yeah. Thanks for sharing your perspective and experience because for me, um, it's very easy to slip into dogma. I think in the, in the nutrition world, it can become almost like religious camps and this is our religion and that's their religion and things like that. And while I am, um, I am a fan of meat personally for me, and I feel really good when I eat meat and I love, regener awesome. you know, I'm very big on regenerative agriculture though. I'm not eating the beef yes. chunk from Walmart. I'm talking like animals that yes. were raised with love and are regenerating the grasslands and they don't spray mm -hmm. anything and these kinds of things. But I, you know, I, I love being able to share your message with my audience to kind of get them thinking because probably a lot of them are coming from the keto world or at least been exposed to it. And there's a lot of these messages and I I've never been able to jive with it. I've never been able to say, you know, sometimes it's, it, it almost turns into mockery or like making it out. Like people are stupid, you know, for being, for being plant-based. And I'm like, come on, no, because I'm like, are you working with people one-on-one? -on -one? Because, well, yes, I have seen certain people uh, do vegan and maybe they didn't do it optimally and their testosterone plummeted or things like that. But is it because they were vegan or is it because of the foods they chose to eat? Is it, you know, what, what were they starting with? What's going on in their body? And, you know, I have a client and she's, she's in her late sixties and she's been vegan forever. And her HBO and A1C is better than mine better than mine. Her blood sugar is better than mine. So mm -hmm. I will say, you know, that kind of like goes in the face of like, oh, you're going to become this insulin resistant diabetic if you eat carbs. And I look at, you know, I love to look at populations like Okinawa. I shared in my, in my book, that's basically saying like, Hey, let's get out of the keto dogma is kind of my, my, the theme of my book. But, um, mm -hmm. I look at Okinawa, the traditional Okinawan diet that has the larg largest amount of centenarians that we have in recorded history, ate a mm -hmm. diet that was 85% carbohydrate hydrates. So <laughs> it's in it, you know, a very little meat, you know, and it's like, what do you please answer that? Let, let's hear, yeah. you know, the, the plants are trying to kill you. Okay. All right. 
<laughs> you know, it's like, yeah. is it plants or is it chemicals or leaky gut, as you say, or other issues, you know? And so it's like, sometimes we get so pigeonholed into a belief system. And I think that's very, I, I in any walk of life, I, I think being pigeonholed into a belief system is a dangerous place to be, you know, it's like, be open, different people have different uh, canvases that you're painting on, you know, so, you know, looking at staying wide open, um, is so, so important, I think for being able to find solutions that work for you, you know, so thank you for sharing that with us. Um, man, Karen, I, I mean, you've, you, you know, as Amy told us, you had the very first, uh, health store in Wisconsin. She was telling us, you know, it was kind of out in the middle of nowhere. You've run wellness centers. You've helped so many people with health. I, I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot here. I did the same thing to Amy, but like, if there's one message, you know, somebody's like, okay, they're starting to get into health. Maybe they've been living this fast food lifestyle or still kind of do sometimes, or they're just mm -hmm. kind of struggling to even want to like, what is the biggest hitter that you could share with them of, of just taking that step forward in their health that would make a big impact for them? Mm, the biggest takeaway would be to understand that everything is electric. So everything that you do during the day is going to be based on electricity and influenced by electricity. So drinking enough water to yeah. conduct the electricity in your body, super important choosing the foods correctly. So you have the right minerals because minerals conduct electricity. They are the, they are the sparks of life and making sure you get those minerals. Again, finding them a whole food source is going to be the number one thing. And please remember to love your plants. I can't tell you enough. I've been doing this longer than many of your listeners have been alive. It's the same answer today. Everything keeps coming back to this. It's everything that I wrote in my book in 2014, when I made all the renditions for the new release in 221, I hardly had to change anything. I added a ton, but because those things are still, they're still tried and true. They've been tried and true for yeah. hundreds and hundreds of years. Yeah. And so yeah. just, I mean, really drink water and make sure you have enough minerals, vitamins, and your amino acids. It comes back. It just comes down to the basics. And yeah. you, I don't, if you're going to eat them from an animal, please do as you, as you recommend as in our stores, we, we had health food stores, we sold animals, but I knew where they came from. I knew right. the men who, and the women right. who raised the animals. That's so key because you're not yep. going to have the fillers. You're not going to have the chemicals. And right. that's important, even on, in our big, uh, you know, I've been asked to be the director of this big integrative clinic. And so even at the clinic, we're raising all of our own animals. You bet so we are awesome. because some people are going to be keto, but I want to make sure that I know yeah. the animals that we serve are coming from us and coming from love and light and nature and are angry yeah. and are humanely and delicately yes. harvested. That's yes. so important. You know, so it's, important. it's just yeah. And I, I'm so excited about your book, by the way, because I think it's thank great. You. And I, and the last thing we need is any more separation in the world right now. Well, I'm keto and you're not, well, I like plants and you don't. And like, please stop separating yourself. We can't ever become one when we keep separating ourselves in a little stupid units with religion and with food and with politics. And then we aren't just like lovers right. of all people. We yeah. If allow, we allow people. Right. Instead of right, wrong thinking, how about learning from each other and taking in information and just saying, Oh, that's interesting. Thank you for sharing that with me, that that's been your experience. Thank mm -hmm. you for sharing noted. Oh, that's how she feels. Oh, that's how he feels like getting to this place where it's, in it's instead of I'm right, you're wrong. <laughs> it's just, Oh, that's interesting information. Thank you for sharing that with me, that uh, learning from each other, you know, and having the ability to, to see you are clearly thriving and healthy and vibrant. And you're saying, I've been eating plants my whole life noted, you know, <laughs> instead of like, nope, still, I don't know. It doesn't fit my paradigm. So I'm just going to reject that, you know? <laughs> so yeah, like, it's just coming together is like, I, I was telling somebody the other day, I think one of the reasons I'm so extroverted and love meeting new people is because to me, that's the greatest treasure there is on earth is like somebody lived 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70 years and gained all this experience. And I can get the cliffs notes on anything from them in like 10, 20, 30 minutes. What a treasure. Thank you for sharing all of that human experience with me in this one moment. And I think when we look at it that way of just like taking in valuable information from others without it, you know, maybe we're fearful that we're just 
going to not trust ourselves and just immediately adopt what they say. It's like, if we can trust ourselves and stay in this place and just say, wow, thank you for sharing that. It's so interesting and let it enter into our psyche as something to consider, like how much more intelligent and wise can we become from learning from each other? You know? So well, that's thought. why you're so loved because you are so <laughs> open and so loving to others and accepting. And I think that is what I think that's the only way that we can go right now in society is to become more accepting. And I will say you are what you eat. So if you're angry and you're bitter and you're upset, would you please go look look at your cupboard right now and tell me what's in it? (laughs) You know, if it's all processed and it's all, and it's all crap and then get rid of it because you are what you eat. If you want to feel alive and full of life, go make a green drink or eat a salad or do something that's living and full of life, you know, and you can just know where your animals are coming from. Just really, really, really hone in on how do you feel? Yeah. And what makes you feel that way? And I do have a great yeah. chart in my book. Um, we took and we measured the frequency of all these different foods. So and then cool. we did the frequency, frequencies of emotions. And yeah. people who feel these emotions are eating these foods. And people who feel these emotions really high, they're eating these higher frequency foods. And you can awesome. change how you feel by just changing the food that you're eating based on vibrational frequencies. And so just check out my book. It's called Live, Live with yeah. Energy. Yeah. Um, stop this easy before it stops you. And uh, you'll love that. You'll love the whole book because the whole darn book is graphed in charts every single page. But that page yeah. is that that graph is really fun. So awesome. I will link that in the show notes so you guys can find that easily. And Karen, I hope you enjoy your time in New York. Thank you for taking a pause out while you're out with your daughter to come share with us today. I so appreciate that. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.